Hello everyone, I'm Ingram from AllQuant and in today's video, I'm going to talk about a class of tradable instrument called Futures. Now, even if you have no experience with them, you may have heard some terrible stories about like accounts blowing up and people going bankrupt overnight after trading Futures. But I can tell you here that all these stories are overblown. Yes, Futures are more complicated instruments than plain asset classes such as your stocks and bonds, but Having said that, right, they are not anywhere near rocket science either. So as long as you understand how these instruments work, you can actually use them safely for investing. All right. So for this introductory video, I'll be covering a few basic things. What are futures? What are the different types of futures? Who trades futures? Why, uh, what are the benefits in trading futures? What are the risks and drawbacks when you trade in futures? And how do you invest right, in futures itself? So without further ado, let's get started. All right, first question, what are futures? Now to understand what futures are, let's picture the scenario here. So let's say you're looking to buy a basket of stocks, which is currently priced at $3,950. But for some reason, you don't want to pay them now. You only want to pay them, say, three months later. So what happens is that you go out looking for a seller. And to make sense to the seller, you entered into a contract with him, which pays him $50 more at $4,000. Well, this is to compensate him for his lost interest charges. Okay, because otherwise the seller can just sell the stocks now at $3,950 and then he go and park the cash somewhere to earn interest over the three months and he'll be better off, right, if you haven't paid him that extra $50. Okay, then on top of that, in order to make sure you honor the contract, the seller requires you to put a deposit of $400 with him. Well, this is in case you do an Elon Musk and start to back up the deal, right, if the share price drops. All right, then three months later, okay, you got the cash and let's say the stock price by then has rose, right, to $4,200. And in, in honoring the contract, you pay the seller $4,000, which includes the deposit, by the way, right, which you've already paid, right, as per the agreed price. And then in return, the seller hands you the basket of stocks. Okay, so technically right now, you can sell the stocks off for $4,200, meaning you make $200 out of this deal. And that in turn means the seller lose out on the opportunity to make $200. So how does all these right, relate to futures? Now, the example I've given to you is a private one-to-one -one arrangement or the agreement of a specific person or counterparty. So if you imagine if we can extend this, right, by standardizing such contracts and then getting them traded in an exchange, then potentially a lot more people can participate, right? And if that is the case, this contract will trade just like stocks and they can be transferred around from person to person by just buying and selling, right? And what are these standardized contracts? You probably have guessed it now. So these standardized contracts trading on exchange are your futures contract. So a futures contract will have its own specification and terms. And depending on the asset class the futures is based on, there can be differences from one contract to another, right? But as an example, this is how it looks like for the e-mini S&P 500 futures contract. So what we have here is the contract name, which is the e-mini S&P 500. You have the ticker or the symbol associated with this specific contract. You have the underlying in this contract, which is S&P 500. The currency, what the contract is denominated in, which is USD. The minimum tick size, right, for the contract. So the minimum tick size is basically the minimum price movement on the contract itself. Then there is the dollar value of a single point in the contract. So every single point in the contract represents $50, right? And then all contracts also have an expiry date. And the expiry date for this particular contract here is on the 16th of December, 2022. And finally, this contract is settled in cash. So this means that there is no actual full payment to the seller or physical delivery of the stocks to the buyer when it expires. Only the net profits and losses are settled. To understand futures a bit more, we need to know how contract sizes are calculated as well as what is margin requirement and what is leverage. Now, when you buy into a futures contract, the actual size you are exposed to is not just the price of the contract you see. Okay, to get the actual size or the actual value, uh, also often referred to as the notional value, what you need to do is to multiply the price you see by the value of a single point, okay, which is $50. So if the contract price is now 3,600, that means the contract is actually worth 100 and 
$80,000 itself. Now this amount may look huge, but you actually don't have to pay up in full, right? All you need to do is to deposit collaterals, usually cash, as a form of margin. And there are two types of margin, right? The first is called initial margin, and the second type is called maintenance margin. So initial margin is what you need, right, to first open a position in the futures. And this margin deposit will increase or decrease where, uh, based on whether your position makes or loses money. And if it falls below, right, the maintenance margin, then you will need to top it back up to the initial margin level. Else your position can be forcefully liquidated by your broker. All right. And because you can potentially purchase far more than what you have in your account with futures, this leads to the next thing called leverage. All right. And let's assume you have $100,000 sitting in your account right now. And you put up margin and bought into one contract of the e-mini S&P 500 futures. So this means now you have an exposure of $180,000 to the S&P 500 while your account only has $100,000. So you're technically what we call 1.8 times levered. So be careful of the risk you take when you use futures. Next question, what are the different types of futures? Now futures are segregated according to the underlying asset class. So there are equity futures and examples of these would include index futures on your S&P 500, your DAX, your Nikkei, Hang Seng and Nifty, right? Then there are also interest rate futures, right, such as bond futures. So most of these futures revolve around like government bond futures such as your treasury notes and bonds of different maturities. Okay, then there are commodity futures right, on metals such as gold and silver, on agricultural products such as wheat and corn, and also on energy futures such as crude oil and natural gas. Okay, then there are also FX futures, particularly on major currencies like your euro, yen and pound. And lastly, we also have a special class of futures on the volatility index, and it is called, well, the VIX futures. So who trades futures? Now the first group are your directional traders or the speculators. So these traders make directional bets using futures by going long or short on it. So many hedge funds such as trend following funds or global macro funds make use of futures for their trades. All right, then the next group are the hedgers. So these are the people who use futures to manage the risk. So this group may already have some exposure to the underlying and in times of uncertainties, they may want to reduce the risk of their portfolio by taking on uh, the opposite trade, right? Using futures itself. All right, this makes their portfolio less sensitive to price movements. Okay, then lastly, we have what we call the arbitrages. Now, it shouldn't be too hard for you to kind of figure out that the futures price is closely related to the underlying, right? In fact, there is a strong mathematical relationship between the two. Okay, but I will not go into the depths here. It is good enough just to be aware of it. All right, and based on this relationship, what arbitrages do is that they will see whether a futures, right, is overpriced or underpriced relative to this underlying. And in the event that it is overpriced, what they will do is they will short a futures contract right and then buy the underlying in order to close the gap and if it is the other way around where the futures is underpriced then what they would do is they would buy the futures and then short underlying right and make the profits when things revert back to its fair value what are the benefits of trading in futures now futures provide you another convenient access to diversification so while much more limited than stocks or funds there's still quite a number of different futures around and some futures such as index futures are actually based on a diversified basket of stocks right and many futures are also actively traded as well so the liquidity is there for you to move in and out of your positions quickly and because of that commissions are likely to be low for these products and the bid ask spreads also likely to be narrow and all this translates to lower transaction cost and unlike private agreements which subjects you to the default risk right from your counterparty in the case of futures the exchange act as your counterparty in your trades so the exchange ensures the integrity of your trade and makes sure that all the profits and losses are properly accounted for next Financing costs when you trade futures are also usually lower than what a broker charges you in a margin account, right? Because the financing costs are determined entirely by market forces and not up to the whims of the broker. And when you short futures, unlike stocks, you do not need to pre-borrow the securities, right? You can just simply open a short position like how you do it for a long position. 
And of course, the risk of securities being called away and then pre-terminating your shorts are also not relevant here as well. All right. And lastly, when you buy futures such as index futures, the dividends are already priced into the contracts and they are not paid out, right? Like when you buy stocks or the S&P 500 ETFs. So if you are non-US investors, you do not need to pay withholding taxes with index futures. What are the risks and drawbacks when you invest in futures? Now, the first is fairly obvious, right? Because futures derive its value based on its underlying. So for example, the S&P 500 futures will of course be based on the S&P 500, right? So the futures will naturally also bear the risk of its underlying. And the second risk you need to be careful about is leverage, right? Because leverage amplifies, right, the risk that you take. It is a double-edged sword. And those that blew accounts up are often victims of excessive leverage. Next, futures expires. Okay, so this is something you need to track and take note of. And if you want to continue holding on to the futures, you have to liquidate the current one and then roll into the next one. So there is an added cost to rolling and it can be a hassle at times. Okay, and futures also tend to be rather large in size. All right, although exchanges are now coming up with like micro futures for some contracts, they are still nonetheless quite chunky in size itself. So it can be quite difficult to size things up with precision unless you have lots of money. All right, then there is also a limited number of different futures in comparison with stocks, bonds, or funds. And lastly, with futures, because the financing costs are already priced into the contract. So you pay the financing charges once you buy the contract. And this is even if you have enough money in your account to pay up for the entire contract value itself. We have come to the last question, how to invest in futures. Now this is very straightforward, right? It is pretty much the same as how you would do it for stocks. First, go and find a broker with access to the futures market you want to trade. Next, open a margin account with the broker. For futures, you need a margin account, right? You cannot use a cash account, all right? Then fund the account and there you go, right? You can start trading. Okay, I've come to the end of this video. Thank you for staying with me and I hope I've shared with you at least one or two new things here, right? And if you do like this video, help and do us a favor and let us know by clicking on the like button below. And do also remember to subscribe to our channel for more updates in the future if you have not done so, right? And for your info at all, Quan, we also conduct online courses on investing. Should you be interested, do pop by our website to take a look at the details, all right? The links to our website are in the YouTube description below. All right, so I'm going to end off here. Have a great time learning and trading, and I will see you soon.